Welcome back to the House of Common Show. Thank you for watching with us. Make sure to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you like us, that's the best way you can support us because the more you like us, the more people who you like get to see us. And we want to make sure that everyone sees how strong the house actually is. And if you listen to this on podcast through Spotify or Apple Podcasts, make sure to leave a five-star review, kind comments, because the more stars you give us, the more people get to see these stars on the show. And also me, because I'm not one. Guys, recently we we are from the we are um in the GTA, the Toronto area, Toronto, Canada, for those of you who are listening from the States or are around the world, because there might be that one person in Belgium who might be a fan of the House of Commons show. Uh, e there, uh, some, e there might be some crazy things that have been, that have been happening. Um, there's been crazy things that have been happening in our world, specifically within our police department. I'm going to turn it over to the resident holy man himself, Andrew Jones. Jonesy, would you give us a breakdown of what has happened specifically to the current police chief, Mark Saunders? Well, okay, so this is what has been taking place. Mark Saunders is the police chief of the, one of the, of the largest police union and corporation in Canada. He's also only the second black police chief in all Canada ever. Well, on uh, June 4th, he went and talked to the media and somebody asked him about racism and how does he feel being a black man and being the chief of police. And so he told them flat out, there's a seven minute video where he says there is racism <clears throat> in the police force, the Toronto police force. And then he began to talk about how there's racism even against some of the black police officers. Uh, so that happened on June 4th. June 5th, he then knelt with protesters. There was a big protest in Toronto and he actually came out and some of him and his officers knelt before uh, the people and they did it together. It was a cool moment to see. But then on June 8th, a few days later, so a few days later after all this happened, he then says he's going to resign, which makes everyone think, what in the world just happened? So I'm going to put it back to you, Chris, and uh, you can start us going on the conversation. So obviously, um, you know, we have Stefan on the call. We have Calvin on the, on the call. They are our biggest conspiracy theorists out of everyone in, in the House of Commons show. Uh, they are the ones who are going to say, like, it happened because of this, because of that, because he knows whatever, whatever, whatever. But the conversation we want to have in this final segment of our, of our show tonight on this episode, um, episode eight, by the way, gentlemen, eight episodes. Like, it's crazy. The, the thing that we want, we want to uh, uh, talk about is this. What is it like to be a black man in leadership? I don't know if people understand that there is a, there's already a burden that many of us feel walking, any in, walking into any environment and being black. But when it comes to being black in leadership, in some ways, you're hurt if you do the right thing and you're hurt if you don't do the right thing. So let me go first to, to, to you, Reem. Um, coach, Coach Reem, um, why do you think it's the case that there's a risk for black leaders or black men, black women to speak up and be leaders? Why do you think that is? Well, I'm going to use um, um, Mark Saunders as an example just to kind of help to show just the risk that's, that's at, at play. So if we look at Mark Saunders and what took place with him, he was appointed in 2015 by uh, the mayor, John Tory. And at the time, it was done as a gesture to the black community to make them, you know, feel good about the fact that we had a black uh, police officer who was the chief of, 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 the, of the city or police chief for the city. And but the reality is, is when when uh, sometimes I'm not saying that's all the time, but specific to this case, sometimes what, what takes place is, you know, these gestures are, 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 are made to, to, to give people of color these positions. But when you're given these positions, uh, though it may be portrayed as though this is a, a, a gesture to the to the community, sometimes it's actually something else at play. And in regards to Mark Saunders, it was definitely something else at play. They gave him a 400k, you know, over 400k salary. And really, though, it was shown to be so. Like, yes, we got our first uh, black uh, police chief in Toronto. Uh, really, what they wanted to be able to do is to use him as a spokesperson to be able to continue the agenda of the powers that be. And so we know this to be the case because, you know, going into his his appointment, the biggest thing that they what the black community was hoping for him to change was the fact that uh, of, of or were asking for him to remove carding. 
He never removed Carding. We also know of other situations such as um, Devontae, what was his name, Devontae Miller, who uh, who actually got beat up by police and, and Mark Saunders never really did anything to, 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 to help out that situation. He got beat up so badly that he lost his eyesight. And, and Mark Saunders never did anything. He, he wasn't able to speak out. And I'm sure he felt injustices or maybe he wanted to do different things. But it wasn't until he decided to... Sh- to flip the script and speak out on the injustices that he was seeing and what takes place three days later, he has to resign. The reality is, is when we're put in these positions, if we sometimes speak out of order or speak out of the way in which uh, they want us to be uh, to act in these positions, there's risk of either being asked to leave or being chastised or being essentially quote unquote stoned for for standing for standing up for what what we believe. When we're put in these positions, oftentimes what they want us to do is is just do as we're told and not actually lead even though we're giving a given a leadership role jonesy yeah so it, this is a, a, a crazy thing only because if this was a white person a white person could say whatever they want 100 percent. a white person can open up and say well we're going to do this this person was a thug this was ever when black people if a white person's here a black person's got to be right over here They've got to be on a different level. They've got to speak a, way, a different way. They've got to act a different way. Be, or they can get murdered in the media, whether it be good for the community or bad for the community. It doesn't matter. And so if a, a person like him or a person that's in a higher leadership, they've always got to tread the line. And so unfortunately, that's just reality. Because sometimes if the, you try to do the best that you can for your community, you're going to get chastised in the media. You're going to be told that you're this and that but then if you do stuff for your police force and back them up then you're going to get chastised by your community Mm -hmm. and so there's no give and take there it's always you're damned if you do damned if you don't and so when we have a situation situation like this what is happening now is he said something like Kareem said he went against the, the grain and now he's resigning that's what he was said I resign you don't necessarily resign after you know four days of doing something that really shows the community that you're with them and you tell the the the, uh, media that there is racism throughout the police force you don't do that unless somebody from higher up or those around them said you need to step down and but what that also does which is scary is if another black person is voted in you've just sent a message to them to say don't say anything because if you mess with us, this is what will happen. Hmm. Uh, there's uh, this one story of uh, of him. Uh, I won't mention uh, where this has transpired, uh, just for the the whole process of confidentiality. But I was luckily to be a fly on a wall in a meeting. Uh, in a neighborhood in Toronto, uh, and there was a very high profile double murder that happened. And uh, the people in the neighborhood, they were speaking to the mayor and uh, they went at Mark uh, because Mark was silent. Uh, It's like in the midst of all of that, they were saying, it's like, it's like, how come we don't see our police chief uh, uh, speaking up at uh, news conferences and everything else? And uh, Tory had his back in that it's like, you don't see the work that he's doing. Uh, and the one thing that I always find is that uh, the pressure uh, for it is Mark was just trying to be himself. And then the moment that he uh, tried to raise uh, his level of uh, interaction uh, with um, with uh, everyone, uh, he ends up getting he ends up falling on his own sh- on his own sword because he is upset uh, some of the people that are there, uh, that he has made life difficult for other people, um, for calling things that have existed in the dark into the light. Mm -hmm. And I would say it's one of those things that as we look at everything within the current uh, media climate, uh, whistleblowers, uh, they themselves are not well received. And it, uh, I would say it hurts even more uh, being someone that is a person of color. Um, yeah. Uh, okay, so 
you know, I got called a conspiracy theorist. And, and what it feels like to me is that there's more conspiracy theories coming out from you guys to this point than actual facts. Now, now here's my thing. Uh-oh. We, I'm with Cal on that. There you go. Yeah, they, we, want, we want people to believe when we say we can't breathe. That's what we're all asking for. I don't, I don't have weapons, sir. Please don't shoot. Believe me, please. And this man said, I've been doing this for 37 years. It's time for me to take a step back. And I'm still going to be active in different ways. I'm, and I wonder, why can't we believe him when he says that? Did he get some pushback? Probably. Was he whistleblowing? Definitely. But perhaps a man of wisdom, of his stature, of, of his tenure, maybe he wasn't allowed to do the things he really wanted to do in the seat that he was in. Maybe he can do that much more. Maybe he's feeling like he's being liberated from the burden of having to be a spokesperson and he can actually get into the areas that he knows need to have a different voice uh, where he can actually affect the change that we're hoping to see. So the, essentially what you're saying is that it, it doesn't appear that he resigned because of the circumstances of him actually be, beginning to speak out in that moment. Um, the, the reality is it's not really conspiracy where there's a lot of the optics speak very loud. Literally three days before, he's, he's, he's making a stand. He, well, four days before, he made the statement that racism is in the police force. He made sure. it for everybody else. For everybody to know and hear, he sure. said it's not just in, uh, racism that is is faced by those in the community. That even amongst his other colleagues, they themselves are facing racism. The very next day, he he kneels in in with others for the whole racial injustices that are going on within uh, North America, North America, and even the world. Three days later, like if he has this platform, if he's saying that these are things that are that are happening in the police force, within the community, he's the police chief. If he really wants to affect change, you would think optics would say that that role would allow you to do that. But the reality is, is I agree with you and I disagree with you because th what I agree with is uh, he left because he realized he really couldn't affect change in that role. What he realized yeah, he is said, all all the powers that are around him they really were controlling what he was what what he wanted to sure. do. But what I where I disagree is that the timing of it is in line with the fact that yes I do believe that he wants to affect change and he can't do it in that role and so he had to leave and so it's a mixture of decision that he made plus with all the pushback that he's getting from the powers that be that did not want want him to be, be, be speaking up and doing the things that he was doing they didn't want no whistleblower we understand what the police are about these guys are the biggest gangs gang in the world and when you whistle blow that is a problem yeah. that's it so in terms of the optics of everything, he definitely, this was definitely something in terms of, this is not, it's not just coincidental that that literally a few right. days after he made these statements that he had to leave or make the statement yeah. that he had to leave, they they basically said, yo, you, 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 you want to speak up like that? All right, you show us who you really are. You got to go. Yeah, well, I mean, he also said that he would have done it had COVID not happened. Right. And so I think in his last acts and he still has some more things to do in the next month and a bit like he he did an amazing thing. Like, I, is he a hero or is he a coward? Right. I, I don't know if with the narrative of saying he's being bullied out of a situation and that we can't trust the words that he said, he said. I'm choosing to step down. It'd be different if he was fired, right? And, and they, again, we could get into the conspiracies of all of that kind of thing. But if we want to believe, if we want them to believe us, we also have to believe him, right? And, and if he thinks that is the appropriate route for him to handle what he's handling behind closed doors and go about the change and the affecting the change that he wants to see in a different way, I don't think we can just say that eh, wasn't his choice I, I think he's a smart man i think he's done some incredible things the longevity speaks for itself and in that seat we all know that sometimes you're just a figurehead right we've seen it in ministry we've seen it in different uh governments we've seen that in different positions in the world and i think we just have to believe him that he's he wants to do something different than he's been doing i think i i agree with cal 
Uh, and, and another aspect that I don't think we actually appreciate is just how difficult of a position Mark Saunders has been put in as the police chief of Toronto and being black. You got to remember when he took over the force, the Toronto police had been doing some really crazy things. We had the, the cop who shot a guy on the streetcar. Mm. Uh, rem- you got to remember, and, you know, carding was starting to rear its ugly head. And we had the summer of the gun going on. And so he was put in a position where he had to, you know, be the police chief. But at the same time, he was looked at as the hero for, for black neighborhoods in the city. And I, you know, I have to appreciate the fact that he was in a, in between a rock and a hard place for most of his tenure. And so does it come at a really interesting time that he, he decides to step down? Yeah, but I think we also got to respect, you know, he said that he's doing it for his own reasons and nothing political. And so I, I'm going to choose to believe him when he says that. Uh, I, you know, yeah, everything sort of lines up this way, but you know what? All in all, like Cal said, his, his, you know, he did some good stuff. And I think we, we got to give him the benefit of the doubt here, uh, just, in how, just in all of this. We, we got to say, okay, you know what, Chief Saunders, you're stepping down, and we respect you and we respect your body of work. So, okay, so go ahead, go ahead, Reed, before we transition out. So, you know, the statements are made that he did a lot of good work. Here's, here's the reality. Uh, from those within the black community, the argument would be that he didn't. And that's 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 spicy. That's that's the reality. So if you talk to a lot of prominent leaders within the, the the Toronto community, black leaders within the Toronto community, they would say that he actually didn't do much. He but do but Kareem, hold on, let me let me finish. Let okay, me go finish. ahead, go ahead. He didn't he didn't do much, and it's interesting that he d- literally doesn't do much to help for the progress for black or people of color with within the community and. Uh, at the moment when he begins to do something, a few days later, he has to resign. What I'm saying is he was put in the position, and I agree with you that he's put in, in, in a really bad position where he wasn't set up to succeed. And at the moment where he said, you know what, forget everything that you guys are trying to make me do. I'm going to be who I want to be. I'm going to say what I want to say. A few days later, he, for his own, and I agree, this was his own decision with the with the pushback that he was getting he he literally then had to resign he was a puppet for many years that's what i said 2015 is when he came into that position nobody and i said it he was a puppet he was a puppet for 25 for 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 a few years and finally when he says i'm not going to be a puppet anymore a few days later a few days later um he had to resign that was a hot take so, Stefan, let me put, let me lob a question to you, Stefan. Reem says something that's very, very, very interesting. The 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 idea, right? Substantial or not, I'm not gonna doubt Reem, but that the black community was like, "You let us down." We read that even when it came to the 44th president of the United States of America, Barack Obama. There were some who said that you did not do enough for the black community. So my question to you is this, Stefan, in light of the role, how difficult is that tightrope? Because if you do, Andrew said it earlier, if you do too much for the black community, you're going to have a whole other side of, of the world who's going to say, well, why are you favoring them? It's for right. all Americans. But then if you only favor all Americans or all Canadians or everything else like that, then your black community is going to say, what about us? We put you there. You represent us. Walk us through that fine line because like, we can, we can sit down and talk about Mark Saunders and why he resigned all night. But the reality is we are all black men. Uh, we are all in various areas of our lives leaders and we all this show for those of you who don't know this show for us at times can be risky because we have bosses we have shareholders we have people who could say about us they shouldn't do that anymore and that could be that could be very problematic for episode nine through whatever for this show us right. speaking out about injustice, us speaking out against systemic racism, us speaking out about all of those sort of things can all can be can be problematic. So walk us through a little bit about what that looks like from a from a from a perspective, Sivan. Well, well, you have to understand that like these positions, chief of police, president of the United States. Yeah, you're doing a job, but you have to understand that they're you're not really in control of the job you do. Hundred right? percent. Uh, Mark Saunders, again, like I said earlier, he's in between a rock and a hard place because, like you said, Chase, he, he can't do too much this way. He can't give, you know, he can't do too much for the black community because, 
another community's in a crowd. So he has to walk that tightrope. And just like uh, President Obama, he couldn't do the same thing. And so he had, he, you know, the chief of police reports to the police board. And those people on the police board represent different neighborhoods in the city. And so Mark Saunders has to re report to them. So how is he going to be able to do certain things if the people who actually are in control of his job are going to push back on the things he wants to do? Uh, I, you know, one of the things that Mark Saunders, act, one of the things that were eliminated under his reign was actually carting in the city of Toronto. Like you can't do that anymore. So when we talk about some of the good things he's done, that is something that, that was eliminated under his reign as police chief. But again, like I said, it is tough to do a lot of things. We see this in politics all the time in, in, definitely, in different parts of, of, you know, chiefs of whatever, police, fire department, whatever, is that you want to move forward, but then you have people or, you know, different, uh, let's put this, competing interests holding you back. You have to deal with the money aspect. And do we want to spend money in this community? Do we want to spend money over here? And so Mark Saunders had to sort of walk that rope and uh, this is going to sound terrible. He had to play the game. Um, yeah, I, you know what? I hear what you guys are thinking, but I think like the supposition is all that, you know, it's coming from a place that we intrinsically think that Mark Saunders is for us, is for the people. And we have to realize that, um, that he's a cop as well. And, um, there's this quote at the at the beginning of this movie called End of Watch. I love it. I've been thinking about it all week. <laughs> so, oh, side note, Adam always has a movie quote. Always. Yes. Always. He's got a movie in his head. Always. always has a movie in his head. Sorry, Hosky. Please, Siskel, Siskel and Hosky, continue, please. So it goes, I bleed... I think I love and yes, I can be killed. And although I am but one man, I have thousands of brothers and sisters who are the same as me. They will lay down their lives for me and I them. We stand watch together a thin blue line protecting the prey from the predators, the good from the bad. We are the police. And I think Kareem alluded to that, but I don't think you went far enough down the road, Kareem, in terms of understanding that the boys in blue are for the boys in blue. Yes. And, and I think that I, I think we want we want to uh, like I want to think the best of of Mark Saunders, but we also have to understand the culture of of police forces, and I think that this is one of the intrinsic issues that we have when we and we'll approach this topic. I think, but when we talk about police forces, the modern police force is not accountable to the public. This is actually the the the. Um, they're not sorry. They're not first accountable to the public. They're first accountable to their unions, second to politicians, third to themselves, and then fourth to the public. We are low on the priority list, and I think that when we look at these um, uh, this situation, I think when we're coming from the supposition that Mark Saunders is for the people, I think we're looking at him as a black man, and we're hoping that he is first for the people. But we have to factor in the the, the 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 part that yes, he is actually a cop, and so I don't want to speak to why he stepped down. I don't have enough information on that, but I will say that like you have to factor in the 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 the, the fact that like his progress over the years and the things that he's done. He he is a cop. He's he's from that line, that that thin blue line that it talks about. And I I, I hear you, Adam. But here's the thing. And I, you know, I'm not, I don't want to, I don't want to defend the police, but I can, I can guarantee you that even though, you know, they're cops, I have been interactions with police where maybe or maybe not, I've broken the law a little bit. And the cop has looked at me. <laughs> so, you know, like, like the word so you have, have, so you have just, broken the law. just so we clarify, so you have. <laughs> Not maybe or maybe not. Um, keep going, keep going. Uh, and they looked at me and they, you know, giving me the nod and said, listen, let's forget about this today. And these are not white cops. These are black cops, okay? So I don't, I like, again, I'm not defending the police and I'm not defending Chief Saunders, but I think we, we sometimes make broad generalizations. I've seen, I've heard, and I'm not the only one, I've heard stories of guys who said the cop has let me off because I was black. Now they're far and few between. They're far and few between, and I will admit that. Uh, but but we can't. I don't. I don't like generalizing generalizing the cops. And I know the climate, the culture we live in right now. You know, it's easy to do that. But they're. You know, I I have experienced the opposite. Yeah, but uh, Stefan. Okay, okay, okay. Go ahead, Shay. Okay, go go go, 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 go ahead, Shay. 
Go ahead, Shay, and then we're gonna get Jason in, and then we're gonna steer away from cops, and we're gonna go back towards black men and leadership. All right. Yes, please. So Shay, please, Jason, please. and then we're gonna turn it. We're gonna turn it. We're gonna turn the ship. Please, please. run it, run it, just, run it, run it, Shay. I just want to understand the point of the statement you just made. So, right. hear me out. Because a cop let you off because you were black, made that cop for black people, even though you were breaking the law. You, you want me to say some incriminating stuff, don't you? No, I want you to look at that and just, that doesn't make sense. His job, his I'm, not job saying, is, I'm, not, I'm not saying that that cop is for black people, but again, there are times where so what are you saying? That. Well, <laughs> no, don't ask him. You know what? Keep it a moving, Chase. All right, where, so where, Jason. Where, where, where are we going? Now, Chase? Jason. No, Jason. 